Hello group, my name is John and I am an overfluxer. Welcome to Black Bear Forge. How do you know how much flux to use when you're forge welding? Do you need a lot? Do you need a little? Personally, I think most of us use way more than we really need to because it seems like if a little's good, more is better, and that's probably not the case. But how much is enough? And I thought I would do a simple little experiment today just to see how far flux really flows inside of a sealed joint for a forge weld. Now to keep this fairly simple, I have prepared three sections of quarter by one and a half flat bar and I've welded a two inch long piece to the end. Just a little tack weld on each end to hold it in place and keep the pieces together. I'm going to put flux on a little differently for each of them and then we'll grind off the tack welds after they cool, separate them and see how far did the flux actually get into the joint. So the first one I'm just going to use borax on and I'm only going to put flux right at this seam and I'm going to try and use about half of my flux spoon worth. Not at all like in that opening scene, just a bare minimum amount of flux. The next one I'm going to use the Iron Mountain Flux and do the exact same thing to compare the different flow rate between the Iron Mountain and the Borax. And I presume that Iron Mountain is probably similar to Easy Weld and Sure Weld and some of these other welding fluxes that are out there. Pretty much there's Borax and there's other stuff. And the other stuff doesn't seem to flow quite as well, but we're going to test that out. On the third piece, I'm again going to use the Iron Mountain Flux, but I'm going to put it all the way around so that I can see if it makes a difference to surround the joint or if just putting it on one side is really all you need. So we're going to bring these up to a, an orange heat. We're going to flux them. I'm going to put them back in the forge, let them come back up to an orange heat, but I don't want to get them all the way to a welding heat because if everything is perfect, they could actually weld like that. Probably not very well, but they might be hard to get apart and then it might be hard to examine how far the flux flows. So at welding heat, it might flow a little further. So not a perfect test, but it's uh, better than what I've done in the past. And for 30 years, I've never really explored how much flux do you really need. So join me and let's see what we need. So starting with just plain old 20 Mule Team Laundry Borax. I've got about a half a flux spoon's worth here, maybe a little bit less. And I'm just going to sprinkle that right on this end of the weld. That's all I'm going to do. That goes back in the fire. Now our next piece I'm going to use the Iron Mountain Flux. And I'm going to try and use about the same amount. right there in that same place and see how far that capillary action should help pull this into the joint. We'll see if it does or if it doesn't. And on the third one I'm going to go for a whole flux spoon's worth if I can avoid spilling it. I don't generally use the Iron Mountain Flux or the Flux Spoon because it's got that cool squirt top, but this just helps the experiment go a little bit better. And I'm going to try and spread this equally around all four sides of the joint and see if that makes a difference. If the first one doesn't penetrate all the way, this one might. So now I'll bring these back up to temperature. And then I'll just let those cool and grind the little welds off.
We have our sample pieces cut apart. Let's see if this actually tells us anything now. The first piece is the one that was just borax and just put on right at the edge. And what do I find when I open this up? There's some sort of a layer here. It's interesting, it's, it's turned white in some places, but it wasn't white before, so I think that's still just a thin layer of the, the borax. It looks like it may not have flowed quite as evenly into this one corner. But other than that, it got pretty much all the way down in there. So if I had fluxed lightly the edges, this probably would be entirely fluxed at this point. The second piece is the Iron Mountain flux done exactly in the same manner, just a little bit right across here. It's still kind of warm. And it has that same white residue, which I presume is it's still a little too hot to touch. Actually, it isn't a residue. This one I can see it a little better. That's actually clean steel. So that's where the flux has flowed down in and cleaned this down to bare metal, I think. Just looking at it, that's more silver than white. And again, perhaps this edge doesn't have quite as much. But this dark area up in here, that's a thicker layer which appears to be flux residue. And it's possible that that's what's down here too. It just doesn't look quite as thick as it does up in here. My guess is this is probably enough on both of these that it would have made a good weld, but it's that little bit of doubt that makes you go to what we did here and go all the way around. But even going all the way around, it doesn't look much different. There's some areas that are cleaned right down to the, the bare surface. And there's some areas that there's a bit of a residue on. Well, it's just really hard to tell what's what here. But I, I suspect all of these would have welded. This one clearly got a little bit more of the surface clean beforehand. But as you hammer and as you get this up to a full welding heat, that flux is going to continue to flow and capillary action is going to carry it down. I was probably still about four or five hundred degrees below welding heat where I stopped this just to guarantee they wouldn't weld. Now what about that first mess we did? This one's the one we I put way too much flux on just to make a point at the beginning of the video and wasn't really part of the demonstration. But there again, there's a thick layer of flux buildup in here, but all this white area, or what appears white, is actually cleaned down to bare metal and it's left shiny and silver. Without doing any wire brushing or prep beforehand, the flux has cleaned that, which is exactly what you want the flux to do. So what, if anything, does that tell us? Well, in my mind, that tells me that using a minimal amount of flux really does do the job. That is nearly completely penetrated at the lower heat, and these are fairly big pieces. Using a little bit more flux going all the way around the edge is probably better insurance, but using three or four heaping spoonfuls of flux on a weld like this, and again, this is inch and a half wide, two inches long, so that's three square inches of weld surface with about a half teaspoon of flux seems to be plenty. For doing scarf welds, for chain links, for welding tong reins together, you just simply don't need that much flux. A little bit goes a long way. It really seems like it flows. It does its job. Perhaps later we'll do some where we actually use these minimal amounts do the weld and then cut the welds apart and see if we can find any separation of the weld. Perhaps not the most realistic test because these aren't weld joints that I would typically do, but we may do that at some point in the future. My point though is that we all tend to use too much flux and we can probably get by with a lot less. Does it hurt to use too much? Yeah, in the long run maybe not. 
Although with this piece, there is a big buildup of flux. If that doesn't all get squirted out of the weld, it's going to keep the weld from sticking. So if you use too much, you've got to get it out of there as part of your welding heat. And if your joint is designed properly and if your procedure is correct, you should ex expel all of that flux out of the joint one way or the other. But just in case, using too much might not be good. If you're welding in a gas forge, flux is corrosive. It eats the floor of the forge. I think borax is especially bad about that. But any flux is bad for your, your forge. So the less you use in a gas forge, the better off you are, the longer your forge is going to last. In a coal forge or charcoal or coke, flux contributes to making clinker. So the more flux you use, the more clinker you're going to have, the bigger the clinker is, the more often you're going to have to clean your fire. So using less flux is beneficial in a lot of ways. It's also cheaper. You don't have to buy it as much. Some of this stuff gets expensive if you're buying the Iron Mountain or the Easy Weld. Laundry borax is pretty cheap and it probably doesn't hurt if you're, you're wasting some of that. But why waste it if you don't have to? I think I learned something today. I think I'll try to use a lot less flux than I have been and see how my welds go. If they don't seem to be taking like they should, then I may go back to using a little bit more and try and find that happy medium. But I'm pretty confident that I have been putting way too much flux on for way too many years and I'm going to try and back off a little bit. I hope this helped you a little bit understand how much flux you might need for a piece. I hope it was educational. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button down below so you know when we make new videos. In the meantime, get out to your shop, make something, try some forge welding, but do stay safe and do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.